Greetings everybody, my name is Bob and this is the RP15 Bare Bones Hardware Installation Guide. Of course, you're also going to need the Windows 11 image, the drivers for this system, and you'll also have to purchase your own Windows key to make everything proper. Uh, the instructions on the Windows 11 ISO image and the link to the drivers I will provide in the description below. There's not a lot of detail for me that we would necessarily have to cover, and many of you that are buying bare bones are probably under the understanding that that's going to have to be things that you're going to have to source. You have to do a little bit of work after all. It is bare bones. Meaning, you're also going to need your own storage, uh, PCIe Gen 4 compatibility within the RP15, and memory, DDR5 up to 5600 speed and 1.1 volts. You cannot exceed either one of those. Doing so, your laptop's probably not even going to turn on, or if it does, the screen is just going to stay black. And we'll talk about a little bit more detail on that as we get inside the RP15. You're also, pro tip, you're gonna need a pretty skinny and longer Phillips head screwdriver. Not real typical household item. Traditionally, you're gonna see something about this size, and this is actually too big in diameter to be able to access the screw holes for the RP15. Luckily, we do leave the screws out and inside of a separate bag for bare bones customers, uh, which is really nice. So if you don't have a screwdriver, well, you can still get this up and running. You just can't secure the bottom panel. And those that have something like this, which is the iFixit Protect Toolkit, the, most of the heads, the hex part that inserts into the tool, meaning this end of it, it's just too big around for it to fit inside the screw holes so best of luck to you hopefully you guys have a small screwdriver like this so what's in the box let's get to it shall we right. and that bag of screws as promised and that's it. So the box is empty now. There's your power supply, the hex cable, and the 230 watts FSP brick. It's actually pretty small in physical size. And again, 230 watts. Instruction manual, right? User manual, stickers. Lots of fun there, should you wish. Don't lose your screws. There's 10 of those in the bag. And let's get to it. So with the lid side down and bottom panel facing the sky, these really don't click into place. The screws do a good job of securing the panel. So if you just kind of take your fingers over by the vents here, just sort of lift up a little bit, it, it really is that easy. Right here, we have two M.2 slots for storage. Both are capable of uh, PCIe Gen 4. And there's enough space between um, where it actually mounts to the chassis here for chips on both sides. So this is a one terabyte drive. This is uh, the commercial 980 Pro, the PM9A1. And there's no chips on the other side of the PCB, but once you start getting into, you know, a lot of four terabyte drives, some two terabyte drives, there's gonna be chips on both sides and you will have no problem whatsoever getting that to fit in here and it's not gonna make any sort of weird contact and, and fitment issues ultimately. And of course, you know, these drives are fast. Your PCIe Gen 4 drives, they haul some butt and there's actually a built-in thermal pad and metal plate that will make contact here to sort of dissipate some of that heat. So when you're under long read and write sessions, it doesn't fall flat on its face as quickly. The screws for the M.2 are pre-installed. We're gonna back them out like so. I do prefer to use the Protec tool kits for things like this. I'm just very accustomed to using it. Now, there's a slot. It's going to be off center. If you're using a SATA, there's going to be two slots. Regardless, this can only get installed one way. You 
cannot put it in upside down. You could try, it will not go in. It can only go in one way. You're gonna install this just at a little bit of an angle. Push it in. It'll fall flat down like this and snug it up and you're good to go. If you leave the screw installed and lay the drive on top of that, uh, you may be thinking that, that that's gonna be okay. Probably a little less than ideal as it does sort of lift the drive up a little bit and it could compromise the contact point with the thermal pad and the, the chips of the Gen 4 drive. And again, we want everything to fit as flush as possible to just you know optimize that, uh, that heat dissipation again, because these drives can get pretty warm. Underneath here, DDR5, you guessed it. So move this up and out of the way like so. And the slots on DDR5 are just barely off center, just ever so slightly off center. So that means that it can only go in one way. Make sure that's seated all the way, and then it clicks down. Nice satisfying click, and to remove it, these little metal tabs, you're gonna lift out, it's spring-loaded, it pops up, and then we'll slide it out. If we try to install it the other way, it looks like it could fit, but it doesn't. The DDR sodium is shifted over to the right, it's just not going to work. So you want to make sure the orientation is perfect. Slide that in all the way and press down. Again, same thing on this side. I can see that the orientation is a little bit off to my right. And so for this, the chips will face up. That's going to click down into place. There is plenty of room between the the PCB, the motherboard, and the memory module. So if you have a 64 gigabyte kit, 32 and 32, there's gonna be chips on both sides. That's not going to be an issue. There's plenty of room there, which is really nice. We've got you covered there. Very good accessibility, nice hardware compatibility, but I have to reiterate, 5,600 megahertz at 1.1 volts is the most this chipset and laptop will be capable of exceeding any of those two numbers, let alone both. And you would be pretty lucky if this system would even post for you, let alone do anything at all. You can run this machine just fine with one memory module. DDR5 is very fast. So if you can only afford one module and maybe you wanna upgrade later on down the road, that's what bare bones is all about. You can do that. If you eventually want to have 64, but you just want to have 32 for now, you can buy a single 32 gigabyte module, install that in any slot, and then later on you can upgrade without having to worry about sacrificing performance, which was an issue with DDR4. It's not with DDR5. So all in all, pretty simple to do. Of course, when you're done, bottom panel, Kind of just lays on like so. And then your screws, let me give an example as to what I'm talking about. Put a screw in right here. I can't, I can't reach that, it won't screw down. And this little guy here, which not everybody will have access to, but that works just fine. There we go, just a little bit of snug and we're good to go. This may work up into a point. It's starting to get a little firm, but it is starting to bottom out there. So you may have luck getting some of these screws in. These you definitely won't. The ones in the front, you might be okay. The ones in the side, there's, there's no way it actually hits right there. So just a heads up, if you're using a pretty fancy iFixit toolkit like this, you may have a hard time getting the screws to be fully secured. But other than that, that's it. That's all you've got to worry about. Just respect the memory speed, make sure you are installing everything correctly. It is very stress-free. And then after that, you need to make sure that you source your Windows 11 image, right? 
And then the drivers, I'll have a link in the description below for our support page. You can get the latest drivers for this model and then get your Windows updates, install your product key, and you're good to go. Congratulations, you've just built your bare bones RP15. It's very easy to do, and that's it. My name is Bob, and we'll see you in the next video.